Welcome to Emergency Chaos, where we provide tips and tricks to make you a better ER nurse. Today, we are going over what supraventricular tachycardia is, what makes it deadly, treatment, and specific nursing tips for new ER nurses. Thank you for your time. So, SVT is a rapid heart rate originating from above the ventricles. The issue is that if the heart rate beats too fast, generally when going over the 150s, the ventricles won't have enough time to fill with blood, and as a result, decreased cardi cardiac output will happen. This will cause symptoms of poor perfusion, like dizziness, shortness of breath, chest pain, fatigue, altered mental status, and a feeling of palpitations, to name a few. Key findings on an ECG that can help differentiate SVT from other rapid arrhythmias are that SVT will have a narrow QRS complex, meaning less than 0.12 seconds, or three of the little tiny small squares. The QRS complex will be at regular intervals from each other, and there's going to be no P waves, and the heart rate will remain the same or very similar um, throughout. So the rate it's not going to go... 200s, then 160, then 180. It's going to remain the same or around the same. Typically, again, anywhere above the 160s. So now, the most important things when it comes to SVT and any patient that comes into the ER is that you have to differentiate between being stable and unstable. To keep it simple, an unstable patient will exhibit signs of poor perfusion like we discussed. And things like diaphoresis, nausea, delayed capillary refill, so forth. But keep in mind the hypotension, being dizzy, chest pain, all those symptoms, those are all signs of being unstable. But let's start off with stable, stable SVT and how it's commonly approached. So the first interventions are gonna be vagal maneuvers. They help slow conduction through the AV node and ultimately help slow the heart rate down by working on the vagus nerve and the parasympathetic nervous system. The Valsalva maneuver is the most commonly used and it requires a patient to bear down as if they're going to pass a valve movement. You're going to hear a lot of nurses and providers say that. In the ER though, you're going to have the patient blow into an empty syringe as if trying to blow out the plunger. This is going to be typically accompan accompanied with placing the patient supine and lifting their legs while they're blowing against the syringe. Another vagal maneuver is cold water immersion, which entails submerging your face in ice water. In the ER, most of the time though, you're gonna get an ice pack. If you do this, if you do end up doing this uh, vagal maneuver, you'll get the ice pack and just place it on their face. And that's gonna help fully uh, stimulate the, uh, the vagal response. The last one is gonna be the carotid massage, where, the, where gentle pressure is applied on one side at a time, and it's typically done by the provider. Now, if vagal maneuvers do not work, administration of adenosine is next. Adenosine works by blocking conduction through the AV node. It has a very short half-life of less than 10 seconds. So we hope that when we give the adenosine and it wears off in these short 10 seconds, the SVT rhythm that, that was going, that it was interrupted and that the patient goes back into a normal sinus rhythm. The standard dosing of adenosine is gonna be six milligrams, followed by a rapid 20 ml normal saline flush. If it does not work, a second dose of 12 milligrams of adenosine can be given again, followed by 20 ml of normal saline flush. Key things about adenosine are that you must have an IV in the AC so that it can reach the heart faster. You must also raise the patient's arm while administering the adenosine so that it has an easier time getting down to the heart with the assistance of gravity. And you must also rapid push adenosine. And again, it needs to be immediately followed by the flush. Also, please ensure that the patient is aware that they may feel an impending sense of doom as their heart is essentially gonna stop, right? Finally, ensure that the patient receives an sedative medication, such as Versed or Atominate if times allows. And if they're stable, it should allow for something for sedation as it can be a very frightening uh, feeling when you feel your heart stop with adenosine. Now, there are gonna be other medications that your provider may order. I've administered deltaism in the past instead of adenosine. The reasoning that was provided to me was that it can work just as well and it does not have the same impending doom side effect, which makes it an overall better experience for the patient. I've also experienced adenosine not working, uh, trying other things, and the patient also refusing the cardioversion. And instead, we've administered infusions of amiodarone or procainamide. Typically, cardiology gets involved by this point, and if you're administering these medications in infusion, of course, I'm on the cardiac monitor, continuous blood pressures, pulse oximetry, and so forth, and watch for hypotension and for widening QRSs, right? Now, let's go into an unstable patient. They come in, they're unstable, they're hypotensive, they're altered, they're pale. This is gonna warrant cardioversion. So you need to grab the crash cart and you have to place the pads on the patient. Remember, the sandwich position is best, from the front to the back. Your provider is gonna dictate the joules used, typically initiating anywhere between 100 joules to 150, 
if subsequent and subsequent and jewels are needed or shocks are needed it's typically going to be 150 or 200. now when you cardiovert you need to ensure that you sync it to the r wave if the electrical shock is is given at any other point except the r wave the patient may go into ventricular fibrillation so after you sync the r wave to this R wave, you charge the, to the desired energy level, ensure everyone is clear, and then you deliver the shock. Patients often describe the shock as getting kicked in the chest. So if time allows, again, advocate for a sedative such as Versed or if time, again, that's if time allows in your patient um, and it doesn't delay their care, right? And as with any other critical patient, again, ensure they're connected onto the cardiac monitor for continuous ECG, blood pressure, pulse oximetry, and even the respiratory rate. Now, Let's go over some pieces of information that you should know and some tips. The longer SVT has been ongoing, the harder it is for vagal maneuvers to work. When giving adenosine, again, make sure you place the IV in the AC so it's closer to the heart. Lift the arm so that it's easier for it to reach the heart. And of course, give it rapid push and flush it. As far as the flush, I've used a stopcock valve in the past where I give the med through one side, flip the valve, and push the flush on the other side. I've also seen nurses that have a pressurized normal sailing bag connected, and they give the adenosine, open the pressure bag, and that's their flush. Have the patient on the pads and the crash cart bedside, even if you're just doing the adenosine complications are gonna can come up and you need to be prepared just in case so again even if you're just doing the adenosine you still need to have the patient on the pad and have the crash guard at bedside just in case complications come up now again i'm going to repeat it if your patient's not unstable you need to advocate for a sedative especially when you're receiving adenosine and the cardioversion Ensure that you know how to use a defibrillator, especially here, know how to cardiovert. And then again, keep in mind the characteristics of SVT on an ECG. If the QRS complex is wide or the heart rate is bouncing around, double verify with the provider that it is true SVT and that they still want the adenosine or any other medication before doing so. Again, and the last tip is going to be to educate your patient on what to expect during the adenosine and cardioversion. The last thing you want is for them to feel that impending sense of doom uh, after the adenosine because no one told them that, that was what they were going to expect or the same thing with the cardioversion. And if you would like to continue learning and master the basics of uh, emergency nursing, check out our books on Amazon. With the view inside option, you can take a look at the table of contents for what is included in the books. And the links again are below. And if you've learned something recently while at work that may be helpful to other new ER nurses, please consider sharing it in the comments so that we can all benefit and help each other out. Thank you. And as always, teamwork makes the dream work. And here at Emergency Chaos, we are proactive, not reactive.